Hello, my name is Jackson Fletcher, and I did my project on pork schnitzel. Uh, history and culture of pork schnitzel. Uh, so many believe that the dish originated from Germany, or other sources argue that it may have actually started in Austria. Uh, evidence dates the dish as far back as the first century in these European countries. Uh, in the 1850s, many Germans immigrated to Texas, where beef was much more widely available than barrel or pork which is was traditionally used in the schnitzels in Germany. So the Germans began using beef in their schnitzels rather than pork, and that's how beef got initiated into a schnitzel. Um, a schnitzel has become one of the most popular and iconic dishes from Europe. And the name schnitzel traces its roots from the word, which I may butcher this, der schnitz, which simply mean, is which is simply a, a verb in German, which refers to a slice or a cut. Uh, the nutrient composition of pork schnitzel. So one serving or one piece of a pork schnitzel contains 15 grams of carbs, 9 grams of fat, 19 grams of protein, 220 calories, zero sugar, zero fiber, and is also a great source of vitamins B12 and B6. Uh, relationship to disease. Uh, Pork products infected by a certain type of worm that are raw or undercooked can lead to a risk of severe food poisoning called trichinosis. Once consumed, some symptoms are chills, headaches, fever, irritated bowels, and more. Luckily, the risk of trichinosis is much lower in pork snitchel because it is fried at very high temperatures. Uh, ingredients. So our fresh or Grown ingredient in the pork schnitzel was parsley. It was used as a topping and to add flavor to it. Uh, we bought the parsley at Publix. Uh, we know the parsley was fresh because it had no odor and it had no off color and was just bright green, uh, fresh color. Uh, the pork was obviously the main ingredient. Uh, it was also bought at Publix. And we also knew it, it was fresh because it also had no odor or no off color. Uh, agriculture. Uh, parsley's growing season begins in the late spring or early summer and extends to the fall. Uh, parsley plants grow every three to five years, so while there's no shortage of parsley in the world, it is also not the most abundant plant, as in the years that it is grown, it is grown in uh, large quantities. Uh, parsley is easily sustainable as it has a low carbon footprint and does little to no destruction to the land. Uh, preparation. Uh, first thing we did is we cut the pork into thin, small slices and pounded them with a meat mallet until they were thin. The next step was to get three bowls out, one with flour, one with spices, and one with breadcrumbs. We then put the, uh, the thin pieces of pork into each one of the bowls. Uh, the next step was we put vegetable oil in a pan on medium heat and we cooked the pork on each side for roughly four minutes. The last step was to plate the pork, we added the parsley, and we enjoyed the pork schnitzel. Uh, tasting. Uh, me and my roommates, I think we all thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, the dish definitely had a surprisingly sweet taste, which was unexpected. And the breadcrumbs added a, a very nice crispy crunch to it, which also was very delicious. Uh, schnitzel can be made, as I mentioned, not only with pork, but with veal, which is most common in Europe, and is also commonly made with beef and chicken. Uh, there's no one true recipe for schnitzel. It can be made uh, using many combinations of seasonings to add a different uh, flavor. Uh, here we have the picture of the schnitzel me, made by me and my roommates. Uh, comparison. Uh, I think the dish, dish is definitely similar to some things that we have here in the United States. I wouldn't say there's any one dish that reminds me directly of a pork schnitzel. Uh, I think the texture of it is very similar to a country fried steak, but uh, a pork chop is more of, a pork chop gives you more of a just how we use pork compared to other places in the world. Um, I think it's very interesting to see how um, food is different in other places of the world as we also have very, we have some very similar uses of pork or as the country fried steak, but it's also very different 
as it is in Europe because schnitzel is just not a very common thing we eat here. And it's much more common in other parts of the world. And here we have the references uh, for the project. Uh, thank you very much.